So I am here to talk about optimizing efficiencies because we're all busy, right? And the question is, how do we get unbusy? How do I find more time to do more? How do I build more capacity? So when I was on my ACE fellowship, I, like Bridget, talked to over 40 presidents. And I asked each and every one of them, after talking about endowment and athletics and um, curriculum and all the things that they manage, I asked them one question. What do you do to manage your time? How do you manage the mass amounts of information? And I pulled out my notebook and I had my pen and I was ready. And each and every one of them looked at me and said, hm, I'm still working on that. <laughs> and I was devastated. I said, these are our presidents. They're running our institutions and they're still working on it. So what hope is there for me? Because I just knew I was gonna get these rules, these three things I could do to be more productive. But the reality of the one word that I heard more than anything was clutter. How many of you have ever seen Hoarders, Buried Alive? Go ahead and raise your hands. You know you've seen it. You've watched that episode, right? And you think to yourself, how in the world can someone live like that? How can they function? It is impossible. I'd go crazy. But how is this picture any different than this? <laughs> or wait for it, this one right here. I need everyone in the room whose calendar looks like this to please raise your hand. Raise it, hi, thank you very much. Why are we talking about this here? Because this is the conversation we don't have. But this is our reality. So the question becomes, if we are leading our institutions to impact the future of our students, to transform the way we are thinking about this work, if we are supposed to be a spark of innovation and we are giving more and more and we show up for more and more, like a week like today, how and where do we find space to innovate, to think, to collaborate, to breathe? This is our unspoken reality. Our schedule fatigue of meeting after meeting after meeting. I am in meetings from 7.30 in the morning until 5.30 in the evening. The only reason my meetings stop at 5.30 is because I pick up my son almost every single day for, from school and that is my commitment. Otherwise, I'm sure they would try to schedule me until 7 p.m. But meeting after meeting after meeting means when do we get work done? My email paralyzes me. I go in there and I'm like, where do I start? Do I go all the way back? Do I go halfway back? Do I go for the flags? Do I go for the things that just came in? Okay, why don't I just not go at all? <laughs> just keep on moving, right? I'm like, if you really, really, really need something, and I will tell you, I have a large team of 13 who are in here, so I apologize, team. But I'm like, if they really, really, really need it, they'll come find me, because <laughs> I never get to the email. I actually have a disclaimer on the bottom of my email that says something to the effect of, I'm in meetings throughout the day, I probably will not get to your email. If there is something that you need, please contact my office. How does that make you feel when you get that response? How does it make me feel to have to send that response? And let's not even begin to talk about the information overload. All of the information that's continuously coming in to us that we are supposed to sift through, figure out what is the priority or what is important, and then push that back out. But this is our crisis, but it's also our quiet shame. We can't talk about this because we are supposed to be leading the innovation and the transformation. We can't have this conversation because then how possibly could we be doing the work? And basically someone would look at you and say, you know, suck it up, you're complaining, be an adult. But the reality is to do this work and truly any work, we have to build that capacity. And that capacity has to be intentional. And in some ways, scheduled. So when my presidents did move past, I'm still working on it, and talked about doing the work, they emphasized some key things. 
There's two things that I'm gonna pull out first and jump right in, and one is to delegate and to maximize our meetings. You hear about these all the time. You delegate, you delegate, you delegate. Maximize those meetings, send the agendas. Make sure that you send out things ahead of time. Have the follow-ups. We know these things, but do we do them? The other pieces that they pulled out were things like, one, touch. When something comes in front of you, move it. Send it where it needs to go. Do what you need to do and move it. Touch it one time. That's hard, let's be real. But think about if you intentionally tried to do that when something came across your desk. One of the other things that they talked about was the idea of if our schedules do control how we move, then why are we not scheduling in time to do the things we need to do? Stop creating the to-do list and schedule them into your calendar, but you have to commit and be intentional. That commitment is the difference. Put them there, schedule them, do them, and roll forward what you do not complete. Use a notebook or a note-taking app, whatever works for you. Here's the trick, if you use that notebook, and I have cute little notebooks, I have green ones, I have pink ones, note the colors for those that know. I love my notebooks. And then what happens is I have a stack of notebooks with a lot of notes. If the notebooks don't have the follow-up to them, if you don't actually have a strategy and an accountability partner that is helping you pull the follow-through out of the notebooks, my chancellors and presidents said, you might as well not even take the notes. <laughs> Just walk into the meeting with nothing. The one thing that each and every one of them said that was at the foundation of who and what they were was about energy over time. If you schedule time and you think of your entire day in time, you maximize nothing. But if you focus on energy, how am I sleeping? How am I eating? When am I taking breaks? Do I schedule lunch? And not a meeting, but real lunch. That maximization of energy actually maximizes productivity. Undoubtedly, each and every president said, that is what makes the difference. But across all six of these areas, what they focused on more so was the commitment and the intentionality. Now, and I'll give you a quick preview. They also showed me different kind of tips of like, okay, to get through your emails, you know, touch an email, can you delete it or file it? Nope, can you delegate it? Nope, can you defer it for later? Put it on your calendar. Or can you do it, because it takes five minutes? Well, that works for some of us, but doesn't work for others. But it's just one tip or technique. They talked about being, and this is actually from our friends at EAB, cutting through that email box. How do you do things like, reduce the volume of email, so don't reply to all because then you get five thank you backs, which just add five more to your email box, right? How do you communicate in such a way that everyone knows what to do, how to do, and so that there doesn't generate seven more emails? EAB, who is fabulous with infographs, has created this one pager, we'll share it with everybody, has all these cute little techniques. Yeah, I do like three of the 12, right? But those three help me. Then there's the apps. In this day and age, you can find an app everywhere. There's apps for note taking. There's some really good ones on here. These are some of the best that are highlighted for productivity. And as we talk through in our workshop, there will be pieces and parts that will be useful for some people. There is one that I want to bring to your attention because these are the things that help you manage projects, manage teams, do to-do lists, so much more. But there's one in here, Blinkist. For those of you who are familiar with it, it gives you the opportunity to deep dive into some of the current books that are out there in five blinks, 15 minutes. You get the core and the essence of it. Now here's the reality, we will all say yes, but I want to read that book. And who's gonna have time to read it? So our reality is to ensure that we're pouring in a bit more of information, a bit more of what's going on, new energy, new ideas, we have to use the hacks, the creative tips. My chancellors and presidents talked about the apps are good if that works for you, but what it is about is understanding who you are, where you are, and how do you layer your intentionality on taking the time to say, I have to make the list, I have to clean the email, and I have to create a space where I am bringing in new knowledge. But to do that, 
It is based on a foundation of habit and commitment. We're talking about this here because it is just as important of how we do our work, who we do our work with, because without this space of building a habit, without this space of understanding how we pull techniques that match us, we will not be able to continue to innovate. Join me to learn more about some techniques that work for you, me, and across us, because what makes us stronger is the community that helps us understand our shame and our secret is actually the power that will continue to keep us going. Thank you.